I'm going to talk to you today about the muscles known as the rotator cuff and naturally they relate to the shoulder complex. Another name for the rotator cuff, you can call them the sits muscles and that means so you've got the S-I-T-S, so you've got the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor and the subscapularis. So they are four muscles that form this rotator cuff. Now, they sort of like blend together. The way it was taught to me, think about like a, like a cuff of a sleeve, okay? And obviously the hand is, a, is, is the rotation part of it. So they form the cuff around. But I like to think about it as a, if you've got like a, a manual car and you've got the gear stick and you place your hand over, let's say this is the gear stick and I place my hand over that. So like where the fingers will come around onto the, the gear stick, they are part of that cuff muscles. So this will be the humerus. And then my fingers almost like will lock onto that humeral head. The thing is, they're not just like almost individual fingers. They almost like form a cuff, hence the word rotator cuff, around that humeral head. And they provide, well, they, they do many things. Another name is like active ligaments. So they're not a ligament per se. They have a role of being a ligamentous tissue because they will provide that natural stability because the shoulder think about this okay we've got the hand and then the shoulder is naturally unstable so it sacrifices um, like stability for mobility so we've got this and to place this all around then we need an, a different type of stabilizing system within the shoulder hence the rotator cuff to form part of that passive structure now Let's look at these muscles in particular. So we've got the supraspinatus. Potentially, this is involved in most shoulder pathologies. So, you know, a high percentage. So if someone has, you know, like a vague shoulder pain, especially if they've got some limited motion, then more than likely the supraspinatus will be involved. If you've torn a muscle in the shoulder, typically the weak link in the chain will be the, the supraspinatus. This is the spine of the scapula. The space deep in there is known as the supraspine fossa. So supra above the spine is a fossa, which is a depression, and the supraspinatus will sit within that. And then it goes underneath this area called the acromion, and then it goes under and then comes across to the greater tubercle. And that supraspinatus is fed from the suprascapular nerve around C5 and C6 from the brachial plexus. And the supraspinatus is responsible for that initiation of abduction, but also it's an external rotator. Okay, so it initiates the abduction, but it's, a, it's like the fine tuner. So when you're talking about the fine tuning capability of the shoulder, then the supraspinatus will be part of that. We've got the infraspinatus. So infraspine, below the spine, the fossa is in here. So the infraspinatus will sit within the infraspinous fossa and it will go into the cuff onto the greater tubercle but slightly posterior inferior to the attachment of the greater tubercle. That muscle is mainly for external rotation. It can also horizontally extend. Working with the infraspinatus, we have a teres minor. Just to clarify one thing, the infraspinatus is also fed by the same nerve, the suprascapular nerve, that supplies the supraspinatus. The teres minor, this small little slip of a muscle here, they work like in harmony. So the infra works with the teres minor. Teres minor attaches further down onto the greater tubercle. Well, comes round there, so not directly onto the greater, comes around some more posterior, inferior to that. So it comes along here. This one is an external rotator as well, similar to the infra, so they work in harmony. But then the nerve for this is auxiliary nerve, and that's C5, C6, and it mainly supplies the deltoid. So the auxiliary supplies deltoid and also the teres minor. Coming around anteriorly, we have got this muscle here and it takes up the whole space of the subscapular fossa and hence the name subscapularis along here. And the nerve for that will be the, the subscapular nerve. Okay, again, part of brachial plexus. And then that will feed the subscapularis. This cone goes to, again, the cuff, 
onto the lesser tubercle. Okay, so you've got the greater tubercle where the supra is mainly located, and then the lesser tubercle is where the subscapularis comes. That muscle is the main internal rotator, so it internally or medially rotates the humerus, whereas infraspinatus will turn it out, working with the teres minor, and then the supraspinatus will initiate part of that abduction. So we've got the four muscles of the rotator cuff. I mentioned the anatomy, the origin, the insertion, and also the nerve innervation and the action for each of those muscles. Thank you for watching.